Well, we've learned an awful lot so far about what's happening when you make a bow, what you need to do, what you don't need to do. Uh, well and good, but you need a piece of wood to work with. So, we'll talk a little bit about bow sticks. Now, if you go out and you cut a piece of wood down, any time of the year it's got a certain amount of moisture in it. Uh, in the winter it has less moisture because the tree's not growing, it's dormant. The moisture in the tree stays in the outside part, underneath the bark. That's where your moisture is coming up and somewhat in the sapwood. If this moisture is allowed to escape too fast, what happens is it checks the end of the log or splits it. Okay, so we need to stop this. In the winter, it's not quite as critical as in the summer because there's not as much moisture to mess with. All right, this piece of wood here is a piece of ash. It wasn't cut for a bow stay, but it would make a nice bow. But it was cut for friends of ours we're going to send them to for pipe uh, stem. And what we did is we sealed the end of this with Elmer's glue. It just sealed it tight. All the moisture is going to come out the ends. See, the bark is holding the moisture in. That's why the, a tree doesn't leak. You can make birch bark canoes, because bark is waterproof. So, so we sealed the end. What that does is water can seep through. It can leave slowly at its own rate, and there's no cracks or checks at the end of this log. Now, go to another log we cut just this morning. This was cut four hours ago, and it's already cracking. Very slightly, but it's already cracking because the moisture's leaving. All right, another major cause of cracking or checking in wood is when the heartwood and the sapwood are left together in a state or in a log. There's moisture in both. The heartwood is denser than the sapwood, so the moisture will leave at a different rate than it leaves the sapwood. Because of the different rates of drying, the stress is created, and so cracks develop. All right, so if you're going to work, we're going to split this log I just showed you. We're going to split that out here in a minute and show you. We will separate immediately the heart and the sapwood. Take the bark off. Work it down to our predetermined size, and it should dry with no problem. This piece here is a normal bow stake. This we bought from a fellow. It's been band sawed instead of split. This side has been split. Uh, it is straight grain from one end to the other. And the bark has been removed. The darker coloring you see here is the very inner bark that's been left on the uh, on the log. That little bit doesn't hurt any. We have not cut through the grain, the outer growth ring. Hickory is one of the woods where it's really, really hard to tell where the growth rings are. This has not checked and split. What it has been done has been taken down to approximately the size of a two by four. This is basically what we refer to as a bow stake. We have a certain amount of wood to remove yet to turn it into a bow. Now, if you can look down there, you can see that it is reasonably flat and straight. A wide, big, round tree made this stave flat, one growth ring. This bow will make a more secure bow than a smaller diameter one because of the physics we explained and talked about earlier. It's wider and flatter to accept all the stresses. Now hold that camera there because I'm going to show you here the opposite extreme. This is about as ugly a bow as you'll ever find. This is a half of a limb, a tree limb. It's a very small diameter. It 
as much as you see that bent when it is strong, it was bent that far the opposite direction when I cut it. It should have broken. It didn't break. Now this is Osage Orange we spoke of earlier. I took nothing off but the bark. I left the sapwood on. There are people that say you can't make a bow. Osage Orange and leave the sapwood on that it splits and it breaks. I made this almost a year ago. I then oiled with bear grease. And it's just a real nice snappy shooter about a 55 pound bow. It's one of my favorites because it's so ugly. It shouldn't work. But it's just a pretty dandy bow. We're going to show you how to make this kind of bow. But we're going to get a little bit more involved on some of the pins. All right. Um,